I went to a lecture once, uh, an interfaith conversation with interfaith leaders. Whispers bounced off the church's tile floors as people shuffled into place, carrying hope alongside assumptions, mixed into pockets like loose change. About halfway through the evening, a young woman in a blue hijab began speaking. She was the youngest person on the panel, seated far to the left, and you might almost miss her if you weren't paying attention. But not here, not when she spoke. In quiet determination, she told us of fear and persecution. And she told us of hatred and racial slurs thrown at her people from car windows like bombs. It was a truth I did not know. It was a truth that ricocheted like sunlight through the cathedral windows, touching almost everyone that day. Then a man in the back, who could have been me, who has been me, approached the microphone and said, your people are persecuted, you live in fear, you're battered by hate. If that is true, then why am I now just hearing about it? Why is your story not on the news? Why have you not spoken up about it? The air was still, partly because we held our breath in anticipation and partly because the spirit slows her dance when we stand at the edge of truth. The woman in the blue hijab leans into the microphone and she whispered with a quiet strength that can only come from years of practice. We are screaming. If there's one truth in my life that unfolds again and again, it is the need to listen. For again and again, I will try with good intentions to act and walk with love, but again and again, I will make mistakes. Again and again, I will say the wrong thing. Again and again, they'll call me Peter, and again and again, they will be right. So again and again, I will pray for a truth that ricochets, for ears that will listen, and for space to hold truth. If people are screaming, and to be clear, people are screaming, I do not want to miss it.